Welcome back to Ultimate Orlando Clicks, and this week we are beginning over at the Gaylord Palms. Now we are here for ICE, which is an annual show, and they do have a stage show as well as Christmas decorations in the main part of their hotel, and uh, that's what you're seeing here, some acrobatics taking place there, as well as the, the highlight experience called ICE. New this year will also be snow tubing, and we'll uh, look at that at the end. They got something of a Santa's Village set up uh, just outside the ice exhibit itself, and once you step in, you'll quickly see a lot of colorful ice. I think there's a little bit more color than uh, perhaps I've seen in years past, uh, and the theme is, of course, the Nutcracker, as you've been able to see from the first couple of images. So they were using, um, it seems to me, more of the colored ice and less of the white ice in general. There are props on the ice itself, so the eyeball here, for instance, and the chain, and then the crown are all props, so not everything is made out of ice. It's kind of a mixture of things. Now, new this year is the On the Blocks ice bar, and so it was closed as I'm taking this picture, but if we were to peek in, we would see a, a bar set up, basically, where they're selling additional drinks. So uh, you can have alcoholic beverages. There's the Johnny Appleseed. Um, purchased in this ice bar, and everything in there is 9 degrees, so it's a, it's quite a cold environment in which to do something like uh, have a drink. I guess the drink would warm you up, however. So the ballerina scenes um, are the prelude to the slides, and here's a few shots of the slide area, and you can see that they've got uh, four slides set up with railings. There's a look backwards from the slide area more of the ballerinas. And then climbing up the steps to the slides, you can uh, take in kind of the candy uh, decoration theme they've got for the slides themselves. Then just after that, a couple more scenes leading to the Frostbite Factory. Now this is where they explain how they make the ice blocks and the colors and so forth and which colors they do. It takes two million pounds of ice to produce the show every year and they show what it looks like in various stages of construction, so that's intentionally not done. Uh, sponsored this year by Pepsi Cola, you can see that. It had previously been sponsored by Coca-Cola, and you can see an artisan uh, here entertaining people as he uh, updates things. So they uh, just keep someone on staff, basically, to continue to update the ice uh, as it gets, um, gets older and worn. Santa's workshop is where you can meet Santa just after the ice experience and then over in a different room where it's not quite so cold, you can see people are not wearing uh, nearly as many clothes, is the snow tubing area. Now the snow of course um, stays cold because they have uh, sort of chillers underneath the snow but the air itself is not uh, particularly chilled. And it's an interesting ride. This past week was the IAPA convention and now this is the industry convention for the entertainment and amusement business. So this greaseless fryer, for instance, is there to uh, let vendors uh, know, I'm sorry, to let vendors like this um, let the amusement operators know about their products. So you can oftentimes go sample things, you can sample rides and, and shows, and here um, we're sampling an Oculus Rift, and this is the new 3D technology that uh, is a visor wraparound, and it's, it's really quite impressive. The Sally booth showing uh, the Six Flags uh, Joker ride that is coming or at least a Joker animatronic that is coming for Battle for Metropolis is the name of the ride, Justice League. Beaver Tales, there's a Disney connection here. These, this is the exact same company that was once at Epcot, um, and they are still in business and serving these kind of elephant ear type pastries uh, with different toppings on them, different things you could choose from. Not been at Disney for some time. You always see what's new and, and upcoming at a show like IAPA, and so this is the, um, the wand battle. Um, not sponsored by Universal particularly, but um, people obviously are aware of this because of the Harry Potter phenomenon. A lot of inflatables. They have an outdoor exhibit area as well. And something new, this technology I've seen before, it's a, it's a battle pod, it's called, um, where you sit up close to a screen. The screen is a little, like a little wraparound. It's like your own little I, um, IMAX screen. And the, what's new this time is that there's a Star Wars game for it as well. Here's that Oculus Rift where you can um, <clears throat> look around and it tracks your movement. A little bit like what you see in the Carousel of Progress, actually. The Osborne Lights has returned, and they have a new event this year where you can pay an upcharge and uh, have desserts in the environment here. And uh, you also get um, you know, frozen seating, seating for the frozen show, preferred seating. The nativity scene is over near the uh, town square area this time. And looking in the window here, probably a little hard to see with the lens that I've chosen to use here, this is where there's that uh, baby dinosaur, uh, who was a return from last year. 
uh, as well as um, I think it's Mickey's Christmas Carol. There's a, there's a, a cartoon of significance here. Uh, but what caught my eye this time was the leg lamp from A Christmas Story. I had not seen that previously. It may have been there in previous years. Don't recall seeing Dalmatians as one of the decorations, but that's a nice new touch. And as was this one, this is one of those hidden Mickeys, or some 40 of them. Um, this one, as you can see, it's on the inside of this uh, curtain. And so you really would have to be seeing it um, either directly underneath and looking up, or more likely seeing it as a reflection in that window there. That's how you're most likely to take it in. The Osborne spectacle is now um, presented by Siemens. Uh, which is a new sponsor and thus a new sign and they have this little exhibit set up on the outside there for selling drinks. Now the cat, which is a Halloween decoration included with the Osborne stuff by accident, has been um, included every year in the display and it's always moving around and, and hiding and uh, this year's hiding spot is just devilish. You are not going to be able to find this unless you look in every direction and between buildings and only if you're a certain height it's really hard to find actually the cat is obviously in purple in this photo here new things for me as well included this hidden roger rabbit in one of the balconies this weekend was also the destination d the d23 event attraction rewind and they had some attractions set up that you could look at their um uh, their blueprints, their posters, and maybe go take a picture with a ride vehicle, so Snow White, and all of these attractions are former attractions. Orange Bird is, uh, of course, a returned attraction, so to speak, and they had a Mickey's of Glendale set up. Now, that's the name of the shop at Walt Disney Imagineering, and they brought over WDI merchandise <clears throat> that you could buy, so you did not have to have a Disney ID or anything to buy these things. And um, some unique things like the uh, Ford um, Magic Skyway image here or from Horizons, um, this image here, seen um, at the end of the ride. They had <clears throat> a display set up of treasures from the archives. And these are things from Disneyland, the Atomobile and Adventure Through Inner Space, and then two of the hats from uh, America Sings. There's a close-up of the Atomobile. And the old toad statue from Walt Disney World, and then um, uh, the uh, pig from World of Motion, and then a lot of 1964 World's Fair stuff. That was um, one of the main themes of Destination D. And this um, moldorama that was set up to make Mickey's, another one of the uh, World of Motion figures, as well as a Norway figure from that same exhibit. Now, since we were at the Contemporary for Destination D, we looked around the corner at the Gingerbread House. This is always set up here, although it is not always themed to Frozen. So this is a somewhat new uh, um, attraction. Back at Destination D, they have several of the uh, Funmeister uh, pins available for sale. Pleasure Island was a little bit of a sub-theme. Another one of the uh, traction vehicles you could take a picture with, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, and then Small World, that's from the 1964 World's Fair, that one, that part is the, uh, the bit that's the rewind. So I'm not going to continue with the, uh, the game for just a little while, the um, where in Walt Disney World was this game. I will give you the answer from last week, however, that was indeed, as many of you guessed, from Mickey's, um, from, sorry, from Goofy's Barnstormer. So good job on that, and we will catch you guys next time.